let's talk about the Bucks, I guess, now that we're on, I mentioned Brady earlier. On the old guy QB circuit. God, like, they're just depressing watching the Bucks. I mean, Godwin gets fed. Brady will throw some balls to Mike Evans as well. But they have no run game. I think that's part of the issue. Yeah, with Fournette out, it's they're relying a but lot Rashad on Rashad White. But Rashad White is good. Oh, no, I think so, too. I do they think he's good. They just are bad as a run-blocking offense. And, and, and Brady's not... It, and a position at 45 right now to carry the team and, without a good. Run. And this line, and this line is like this line is destroyed. Worfs I, is out for we're, if three we're, to four weeks. Yeah, I mean, what worse? Wor- if in my opinion, Worfs missing any sort of significant time is like the nail in the coffin for this team. You mean like, the five and six team that is currently leading the division? <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, right? I forgot they were in the worst division in football. So yeah, so, so they're so, not. Sorry, playoff bound Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> So while we're writing the obituary for Let's the ride. Packers, not necessarily for the Bucks, even though they look terrible too, um, I just can't believe that they lost that game. That was one of my locks of the week, uh, and I was like, when they were up seventeen ten, I was like, no chance. Browns have been collapsing all year. But what I didn't take into consideration is that Jacoby Brissett, that was his last start. And oh my gosh! Wow! Right, and he Deshaun and Watson to- starts next week. And Good it's for like, him. yeah, look, he seems like a great guy. And the whole team probably was rallying around him. So I'll also say, so that I think was the emotional factor. Um, and there were a few just like notable plays from the Browns as well. Like Amari Cooper, went, when I thought I had that minus three and a half locked up, was he had this huge, huge drop, huge drop, where it was a great throw by Brissett. And it was in regulation, and I was like, oh my god, what a choke job, job by Amari Cooper. Sometimes he can be so like moody, and his his play just vacillates wildly from amazing, amazing player to what the hell were you thinking? Um, but then he has like a even bigger catch. So it was a huge drop, but a, like an exponentially larger catch in overtime, in overtime to set them up for the win. And even before that, David Njoku, New Jersey's own. I always root for David Njoku because he's from, that was he's one from of, North Jersey too, just like us. That was one of the craziest touchdown catches I've maybe seen in my whole life. And I, I don't even know him. how he st- I don't even know how he how he stayed yeah. on his feet. And I loved him coming out in the draft too. I was like, okay, he's like a really I mean, he's from Cedar Grove, Bradley. Like, Let's he's go. Right around the yeah, block. baby. Um, yeah. He he uh that's really right by where I grew up. So oh, like very close, there yeah. are the South, Florida, they get all their football players. Yeah, but Cedar Grove. I stand with the New Jerseyites. Like, Cedar Grove. I mean, when he was drafted in the first round in 2017, and he's just coming on now. And he kind of suffered a lot from that organization, frankly. Like, they signed Austin Hooper for a lot of money for seem- for no reason. I was like, why are they doing this? Because I, they were trying to be a run-first offense. I understand that. But he's off the team now. He's on the Titans. And Joku was marinating a lot in that organization and now they signed into a big contract um in the off season and you're seeing why because he's really just living up to his potential at this point um but i guess the bigger story there is the bucks collapse and um i should once Worfs went down but i think he went down in overtime still it, it uh it, it was kind of like that's all she wrote and todd bowles is uh First, I don't think Brady's playing that well this year. I think he's fallen off a little bit. He he's picked it up over the past few weeks, but Todd Bowles also is struggling as a head coach right now in terms of his mindset. Unlike Arians, who really like to put the pedal to the metal, Bowles gets so conservative in the second half, and this has been an issue all year. And like as I said earlier, Brady's just not at the point where he can carry the team without the run game. Um, and when you get conservative like that and the run game isn't working, then there's some three and outs and you're, you're not all, scoring. Well, besides like Goblin, you also look at some of these people who are catching passes for Brady and I'm like, who are these guys? Julio Jones, number six. Ever heard of him? Did you see, did you see, um, did you see, uh, co- why is he wearing six? Did you see, um, um, the guy who caught the, the passes, the touchdown, his name is, um, Co Keeft. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was like, who? Yeah. No, he's Kato like, Kalen? 
He's not. <laughs> he's not Brait, and he's not. Yeah, he's, Kate, he's not Kate. I'm like. I'm like. Who, I'm like. How do you have? How do you have three pseudo, slightly anonymous white tight ends? And and somehow Kate Otten isn't the weirdest name of the. Film. I know, I know. Yeah. I um, you give me Kate Otten, I raise you Co Keith. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but 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 I totally agree in the sense that what was more, I think what was more um, discouraging for me beyond the limitations of the Bucks' offense, because even like you said, when Fournette was was healthy. The run game was still struggling. Mm. It's not as if it's not as if White taking over for Fournette necessarily moved the needle that much from what Fournette was providing them when he was healthy. Yeah. And if anything, I think per some, you know, per snap numbers, it almost looked like maybe White would be No, White's a talented player. Yeah. It's it doesn't have to do with the running backs, it has to do with the, the way the, the line's totally. playing and the scheme in terms of the run it's, game. Like it's interesting to see. It's the interesting. offense is too one dimensional. And I think, and I think to your point too, it's interesting just to see how un, how the lack of ambition from Byron Leftwich's offense under Bowles relative to what it was like under Arians. And I think, and I think part of that, like you said, is is potentially just that now with where Brady is at, he kind of can't. He can't. No. He can't give them what they might need to make it more ambitious. And I was joking about Julio Jones. Like, no, but I, not, I, I know he's what you not, mean. But he's, 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 he's very old. I have no idea what the hell he's doing still playing. Like, I mean, and he's not, he's not really, he doesn't seem to be really offering much for them. Also. I'm not trying to even like hate him. I love Julio Jones. He's one of the greatest talents that the league has ever seen. Oh, of course. But, but this, I feel this like is his twilight. he's been in physical pain for a really long time. And I'm just shocked that he wants to even continue but my, playing. But my big concern more is that, yes, the Browns have a great line and the Browns have a great run game. Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb was looking literally like he deserves his spot as either the second or first, you know, best running back in the oh, league. Yeah. Um, but this, the, the, the calling card for this Bucks team was supposed to be the defense. And some of these guys who have been with them the whole year and have been playing well and have, have, have stayed healthy were getting beat. I mean, some I mean, Antoine Winfield was getting, was getting smoked a few times um, in space. And I was a little bit more concerned to see them struggle against a Browns team that, against a few other opponents have not been able to move at mm. will as expected but to their credit with uh, with Brissett and with the run game the the offense has been the browns calling card it's the defense that that's screwed them yeah people thought the defense besides obviously like we were saying last week you know Miles Garrett can only do so much. He can't be the whole defense, and that's that's clear. I mean, they are really not. They the Bucks were still able to score a decent amount on them. It's just they the Browns got the last laugh in OT with the you know with Nick K, with Nick Chubb just barreling through the entire the entire uh, uh, defensive front. Yeah, of the Bucks. I mean, we'll see what this team looks like with Deshaun Watson. I think it's going to take a while for him to. I mean, to, he, he I hasn't mean, played in a really long has, time. <laughs> as 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 much as it's it is absolutely hard to graph someone's success from 2019 or 2020, whatever the case may be, um, to now having not played a single down of NFL football. It one I'm. I would be worried about the psychological impact that this past three years has maybe taken on him. Like right, and also all of the litigation, if, all of if, the accusations. If I'm, like, if I'm like the Browns again, I don't have any sympathy for how he's handled this and how his attorney has like basically bad mouth these women. He could have made this go away a long time ago if he wasn't so prideful. Um, but and, and they deserve every cent of compensation that he provided to them. Now. Just from the team's perspective, though, like who knows what this like when they they were showing him in training camp and there was that media firestorm, he looked like a shell of himself. Like I I, I don't know what how you come back mentally from that kind of scandal, um, and I think he's going to have a very jumpy uh, first few games. But it's kind of best case scenario for his purposes because they're they're pretty much out of it. The Browns. He can just use these final few games as a warm up period for next year. And uh, if the Browns can tr find a way to beef up that defense, even though they, you know, they don't have many picks anymore, um, maybe they can make a run for things. But we'll see how Deshaun looks in the final part of the year.